today I'm going to be talking about how to convert cold traffic with cold Google shopping traffic with the modified broad query uh, sculpting strategy for 2022. So my goal from this essentially is to do a deeper dive in my previous video that is linked in the end card up here of where I talked about the query sculpting strategy and I really went broad with the um, theory of it. But this will be a further continuation on that because I got a lot of questions regarding what if people don't search my brand because a big aspect that makes the query sculpting strategy great is that if you already have branded searches or if you're a reseller, you'll actually be able to leverage that brand recognition and power and profitably focus and, and tune in on that and be able to scale. But when you max out that branded shopping impression share, you're basically left where all advertisers are is needing to convert cold traffic into sales. And there, there wasn't a clear way to do this in a strategic systematic way. And that's what I really want to get from this video. And furthermore, I'm doing demographic and product segmentation to scale at a reasonable rate with this broad campaign, because it's not an on or an off switch when doing this, you want to pick the best products the best demographics devices and the best attributes based on historical data to really be as profitable as possible. All right, so the general contents of this actual presentation will be the strategy overview, an example flow of a product, what product attributes are, the actual campaign setup, Google Merchant Center, and then actual scaling. So here's a strategy overview so we can get a good idea of what the end outcome is. So when there's low to no brand um, or SKU searches, you want to leverage this modified broad shopping campaign strategy. So you can choose relevant attributes of your product by doing the keyword research and seeing how people actually search or looking at your historical data and seeing what engrams or attribute and product type combinations were the most profitable. You don't really want to focus on what a lot of people make the mistake of is either the product type is wrong. So if they're selling a football helmet, they'll show up for lacrosse helmet or they'll show up for different types of sports helmets. That's the first the wrong product type. That's number one. And then number two, they'll just show up for when people are just typing in football helmet. And technically this is relevant, but you want to scale to that point. You don't want the lowest intent traffic off the bat. You want to get the people that are looking up black football helmet for adults first and get that broad cold traffic because it's higher intent even though they're not looking for your brand focus on those scale with that get profitable and then open it up to those more broad terms and that's the biggest mistake people make and when you're also optimizing this bare minimum you're going to get lower cost per clicks because your product titles are going to improve when you update them in google merchant center and also to further help with ROAS, like I mentioned, you should focus on desktop traffic and typically do a 50% mobile bid adjustment. You can definitely alter this or change it. I wouldn't do more than 80% unless you're going to have a separate campaign for mobile or tablet versus desktop, which I have done in the past that works really well. I wouldn't 100% recommend, recommend it because you want to essentially keep as much campaign consolidation as possible so that conversions can scale up to that 30 to 45 conversion rate sooner in the month than possible. And also if you have best-selling products, you want to focus on those two in the broad so you can be as profitable as possible. And like I mentioned, we want to first max out the brand and SKU searches. And this is assuming you've kind of already done that, or this will show you that you can do it. So you can basically get as profitable as possible, max out all the brand and SKU impression share, and then slowly scale with the cold. All right. So just to kind of show you a breakdown, like I showed in the previous strategy video. So you have the modified broad campaign that has the product type plus product attribute, high priority, enhanced CPC, then the targeted campaign with this product type and brand, and then finally the super targeted, which is product type or brand plus a SKU keyword. So it can be either or this lowest priority and maximize clicks. Okay. So this is an example flow. So in this example, I have this product of uh, Visus Zero Two Adult Football Helmet. So this is a pretty good product. And you can see to the left here, we have some product attributes of brand, gender, like things like shell type, or this would essentially be like material in Google terms. This would be age group for Google terms, more material or more attributes. People could look up different terms like this, but this is why we essentially have to look into the keyword data and kind of see what people are actually searching for in this product. And I'm gonna go over this in the keyword research section, but for now, 
these are some pros and cons for a product like this that isn't the biggest brand in the world. This isn't like Nike or Adidas. So you might get some branded search, but it's not going to max out your budget just by targeting brand or the specific SKU if you're selling it. So that's con. So like lower brand volume, people don't search by SKU in, some, in certain industries either. Um, so you have to keep that into account, especially apparel industries. People aren't searching by SKU. It's usually brand, gender, or color attributes or size. Um, but the pros here is that there's a clear age group and a clear product type. So it's a football helmet. So that's what, that's the product type here and it's for adults. So that's a simple age group that we can segment our keywords on. And if we can get these two things, that's super high intent traffic that we want all of it. Okay. So for the broad search term lacrosse helmet, we don't necessarily want to show up for this for a couple reasons and not in any of the campaigns because the product type is wrong. The product type is a football helmet obviously, but this is one of the biggest things people get wrong is when looking to the search terms that out, those have the wrong product type and just right there, their scaling on the broad campaign is just not going to work at all. So this is the very first thing to make sure you're not getting wrong product types. Plus it's not even, it doesn't have an attribute of color, size, age group or brand. So it's even missing that attribute. So this will get negative out in all three campaigns. Okay, next we have football helmet. Okay, so we're getting a little better here where the product type is correct, but it's missing an attribute. So at this point in our, our scaling journey, we'd actually negative this out. Even though it's our product, it's just too, too high in the funnel. It's really gonna spend a lot of our budget and we're never gonna really see what products are better in that, in that case. So this would actually get negative out. And this is a very important part of the strategy going forward. Okay, next we have adult football helmet. So you can kind of see now this is our first type of search term that's actually getting pushed into one of our campaigns. Because as you can see here, the product type is correct, which is football helmet. And the attribute, which is age group, is correct as well. Because as you saw previously, the helmet was for adults. It's not like a youth football helmet or Pop Warner football helmet or, or children's football helmet. It's for adults or even NFL. These types of terms that might even show that it's more for adults would be things that you want to show up for because it's higher intent than just football helmet. So that's perfect to go into the broad campaign with a lower cost per click and to scale with enough volume for a search term like this. All right, next we have Beasts football helmet. So you can see this is the brand plus product. So this is obviously going to go to the targeted campaign. We've got both these correct and they wouldn't go into here because there's no SKU and this has brand. So it's not going to go here. And then next we have the actual SKU of the product plus black. Okay. So product attribute color is correct and SKU is correct. So this would go into this campaign. And that's um, the typical standard way. You might not get a lot of these searches. So it's definitely important to look at this broad and scale that profitably. Now you might be wondering what are all the possible like product attributes you could actually have? And that's a good question because there are so many different product attributes and templates you can, you can have. So for all campaigns, you're going to want the product type attribute in here. So this is essentially the actual product you're selling and I'll link the Google taxonomy, but this is the best way to be specific about your product. So if you're selling a football helmet, you don't want to just put helmets. You want to be as specific as possible for that actual product type without talking about the other attributes. When you're looking at targeted and super targeted campaigns, what you're actually saying is the queries have to include brand and MPN attributes. And then finally for modified broad, there's, there's a multiple different types of attributes you can show up for. So this could be like new or used. If you have, if your product is new or used and people search that, that would qualify it for modified broad as long as it has the correct product type with hair. Age group, like in our example, adults, kids, teenagers, adolescents, whatever your product is, if people search there, that'd be good for modified broad. Color, gender, um, material, like I believe it was like some type of metal material, you wanna add that. Patterns, if you have some type of apparel or customized product, sizing. Now we're gonna go into campaign setup. So when looking at keyword research here, if you have existing campaigns, you want to filter the search terms and I'm going to, I'm going to do a screen recording here, but I just want to kind of give you the overview. If you have an existing campaign, you want to filter the existing ter search terms that don't contain at least your product type and put those in an, 
in a broad negative keyword list because they don't pass the first test of even having a product type. So I don't care if they have the right color, size, or whatnot. You want to put that in a negative keyword list at the ad group level because you want to be much more specific for each ad group because essentially if you have more than one campaign, one, more than one product, and you have single product ad groups, you're going to want to essentially be as targeted as possible and then check the search terms that do have the product type plus attribute and kind of see what is the most profitable. So if people like looking up color, just never convert or people that look up an age group, like adult convert more highly, that could be something to look into and possibly negative out certain product attributes that just don't work as well or add this to your title. Um, yep, and like I mentioned, the easiest way to look at this data when you have set up single product ad groups, which I can make another video on setting up, but this is why the strategy makes it the easiest. And also Ngram scripts, which I'll go over as well, is helpful when looking at words that are the most profitable, whether they're two, three, four, or more Ngrams, and really dialing in on those to restructure your titles and negative keyword lists. So if you have a brand new campaign, you're gonna want to do keyword research to find out how people are searching for your products, titles, and add negative keywords before um, you even spend any money for things that you don't wanna show up for. And there's a few different ways to do this, whether you put in your URL or you just put in some seed keywords, I'll go over this so you can essentially be as profitable as possible. All right, so when looking at a currently running campaign and you want to see the search terms that you're already showing up for, you're going to want to click on shopping campaign and campaign and click on keywords. And I would choose, um, depending on how your campaign is structured, if you're already doing brand um, segmentation of your products, you want to click on one of them. So in this case, great, we're segmenting by brand actually. So we know exactly what the product is and what the brand is. So you want to click on search terms and the more data, the better. So I'm going to click all time data. And then here you'll be able to see that essentially all the keywords and all the search terms, what's getting you the most conversions. And in this case, there's, these are a lot of branded types of terms that are getting this conversions. So what we want to see is actually filter um, by search term, and we're going to say it does not contain our brand. Okay. So now that we have that, we have filtered out our brand. We want to see what types of broad keywords are getting us the most conversions. So here it looks like we have product type and I would say a material. So we have a two N gram attribute search term that is showing up and converting well, but then we also have some single product type searches that are also doing very well here. And we, we even have different languages. So I'm seeing a lot of product type, single product type uh, searches that are converting well. So these are high converting, but we also want to see what are the highest costs here. Okay. So right here, we have another product type of word that actually has a, a lot of spend in no conversions in another product type. That's just incorrect. So these are some search terms that we'd want to add to a negative keyword list because we've seen, we filtered out the brand, which typically converts higher. And we're not too worried about that because that can go into the targeted and super targeted campaign segments, but we really want to find the broad traffic that can actually, um, or cold traffic that can be higher intent and get us conversions at scale and get us more clicks. But as you can see here, these are, these are a couple just product type, um, single N gram type of searches that don't necessarily give us what we want. Like things such as this, like even best mineral water isn't really what we want to see. We might get conversions, but the cost per conversion might not be profitable enough for you, for us to even want to continue. So once we have this information, there's a couple different things that we can do in terms of creating a negative keyword list or just excluding these at the ad group level. So first things first. So if I want to exclude these two terms and begin my broad campaign negative keyword list, we can click add as a negative keyword. 
and we can do it at the ad group level. Um, so this negative keyword list, um, we can click save a new negative keyword list for this specific ad group. And we want it to be exact match because we don't want to do phrase or broad because that might take away other terms that have the proper attributes or the, me or the metrics we're looking for. And we don't want to do that. We just want to uh, filter out these high click, low, row at, low return on ad spend type of keywords. And we can enter the list name, be broad, modified. And then once you found those keywords that you have in the search term data, you can essentially create your negative keyword list and continue to add to this list for this campaign or even add this list to other campaigns that have similar products and click save and that will be applied and you won't show up for these exact terms anymore. All right, so if you have a brand new campaign that doesn't have any search terms data, you're gonna wanna go to the Google Keyword Planner and to essentially just keep our, our same example with the football helmet, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that item. So we can do two different things. We can, get, we can search keywords by typing in seed keywords or we can start with the website. In this case, we're going to start with the website and I paste it in the actual website of that product and click get results. And you want to show everything that Google's going to show just so you can like exclude it yourself. And then in here, you can see all the different types of terms that you can possibly show up for. So let's actually exclude add a filter for a keyword that contains this. So you can begin to see the monthly search volume that you have for all of these products and like the monthly change. You can even adjust the time range, but this gives you a good idea of how much of your budget you can really spend here. So just looking at this for our specific product, since it is an adult football helmet, this is a perfect cold keyword to actually have added. And these terms such as youth football helmets or just these football helmet, football equipment, football gear, this is the wrong product type. These are all things you're gonna wanna add to a broad negative keyword list. So what I'm gonna do is now export this and download this as a Google Sheet. So I can show you how to create broad modified negative keyword list for the specific ad group or product or a campaign. So it doesn't show up in there before for this specific product. So if we go to our data here, what we're gonna wanna do is just simply grab all the keywords. And we're adding the keywords, ad group and campaign. Here. Okay, so we have a bunch of our keywords here. Um, and as we look through here, our main two things that we want to filter on, on these keyword research that we found, is that if it contains adult, we actually don't want to add it to the negative keyword list because that's a positive attribute of our product. So you can see adult football helmets, these are all great. So we're just actually going to delete these so we don't, they don't show up in the negative keyword list. Okay. And next, let's see if it contains black, cause it's a black helmet, the specific product. Let's see black football helmet. Um, so we can see this one works because it's product plus color. This is, this is the wrong product type, matte black helmet. These are all good. Black football helmet, good. This is incorrect product type. This is good. You can see how we can kind of just like filter through here, like NFL helmet, that's fine, honestly, because it's more adult. These are visors. So I'm just gonna remove this. So it's the wrong product type. This is the wrong attribute. So it has the color as helmet, but it's youth. We don't want youth. That's fine. Visor, we don't want. This is actually just like, uh, NFL black helmets. Okay. And we can see how this term NFL works, but you kind of get the idea here. 
that we don't want any anything with essentially the right attribute or that's too broad here. So you can see we have these super broad, just product type keywords. Then we have product type plus incorrect age group attributes. And then we have a bunch of weird sizes here. So we essentially just want to really look through here and none of them have like adult, really cheap logos. Like there's a lot of different things and we can really like dive into this, but you want to essentially just follow that process of finding key terms that you don't want to show up for because um, you want to be as profitable as possible when doing broad. So you essentially just want to go in here and add exacts to a few of these. I think exact is honestly the safest way to go about this. Um, but if you start to see a lot of frequent search terms like NFL or youth that just aren't profitable or you don't want to show up for, you can use a phrase. You can use phrase match, which will block more of these keywords at scale. But for now, let's focus on exact so we're not blocking too many things and hurting our scalability. Okay, you just click enter. And then now you'd have essentially your negative keywords for the specific ad group. And this can be take a lot, a good amount of time for each product that you're doing this for, but you can even, you can still add campaign levels. Like I showed you in the previous screen recording, but if you want to be, if you really want to scale good products in broad, it's worth taking time to actually do this because it's worth it in the end. If you actually want to scale these products, essentially, just drag all of these down and now you'll have the negative, the actual negative keyword list. And you can essentially upload this into Google ads by essentially using either Google ads editor or doing a bulk upload. And I can show you both. So for the bulk upload, first you just have to go down, click here, click download as a CSV. Then you can go back, um, this is an example, so I'm not going to go all the way through, but I'll just show you how it would be essentially done. Go to uploads and then you can select source. You like upload a file, select a file from your computer and you want to grab the file you just downloaded. You click preview and essentially it's going to preview through, tell you if you're successful or not. If you don't have the right campaign or ad group or whatnot, it's obviously not going to go through, but if you keep the right headers, target the right ad groups and campaigns, you click apply and it'll be added in bulk instead of you having to do it negative, negative at that point. So that's essentially how you look at this. I definitely recommend that you pick products that are already doing well on targeted and super targeted so you can take the time to scale them profitably here. All right, so when actually creating a supplemental feed, you wanna go to Google Merchant Center account and click on products here, click on feeds. And then you're going to click on add a supplemental feed. And in this case, we'll just name this titles. And we're going to want to use a Google sheet. When it's going to open up, you're just going to want to log into your Gmail account, click continue. Um, and you want to use the actual uh, primary feed that you're using. In this case, we're going to use the content API. All right, now you can see that your feed now made the titles feed. So you want to open that up. And for our example, and for all supplemental feeds, you're always going to need an ID. And then depending on what the data you're going to change, you'll have to change these other attributes. In this case, we're going to be updating the titles based off of search terms data. So we'll just say this ID is one, two, three. And we're seeing in the search terms data, so if we go over and open up this, these keyword stats that I previously sh uh, showed before, and we really want to scale and update, update our, our products for cold traffic, we might want to put instead of our brand, our brand product, which had, uh, let's see here. It was Vsys, it was Vsys uh, Zero Adult Football Helmet. Instead of it having our, our title like this, so we'll show our old title here. It's our old title, and we're having football helmet at the end. We really want to optimize for cold traffic. 
so we can see that this has so much volume. So if we can optimize our searches for these types of clicks, even though we don't necessarily want to target this exact keyword, we're just seeing a lot more people are looking up um, football helmet. We can add this to the very front of our search term. Or if we're seeing this is probably the most relevant, we can also add um, product, I mean, age group plus product type and focus on that. And I think in this case, this would be the most relevant, but just to keep, uh, you really want to be focusing on volume when doing this, because if you can convert this cold traffic or even getting lower cost per clicks because your titles are optimized, it'll be worth looking into. So we go back to our supplemental feed here. We'll want to add this. So adult football helmet. And then basically just want to remove this from the back. And we can have the brand. So it can be adult football helmet. I typically add commas to break it up. And we can add black. And then we have the item ID. And this will be our new title because it's optimized based off of data. And you can always test and add more data. The more, the better. Um, here, so you can even look through some of these if anything's relevant. We can add more, but this is our one example. So once you have this in the feed, you're going to want to go back, click on your feed here, and click Fetch Now. And this will actually fetch uh, fetch the feed so that uh, it can show up on your actual updated products and go to your primary feed. And once it's processed on an actual campaign, you'll see this up update within an hour or so. And you'll, you'll begin to see your click-through rates increase on these changes, lower cost per clicks on some of these broad modified campaigns as well. All right, so next I'm gonna go over product and demographic segmentation. So typically when you're getting to the broad modified strategy, you would like to start with the best-selling products first that were working previously when you're targeted or super targeted campaign. This would be the most likely to convert to cold traffic. So it will just be beneficial for you to start there. This also works in terms of segmentation, products that have really good pricing that you're competitive with, which I can show within the actual Google Merchant Center um, competitive pricing report, but products like this will, will be helpful as well. Even if they haven't gotten sales, you've reached competitive with pricing, you wanna scale the cold traffic, that would be a good way to look at it. Seasonal products that um, are coming in terms with like a lot of search term volume, you can segment products there to scale on broad. Um, like I mentioned previously, focusing on desktop devices, typically you have higher conversion rates. And if you're not spending your budget, you can add mobile or add more products from there. Another thing a lot of my clients do is segmenting by a converting location. So if you have a state or regional type of product, or if you even have fast shipping to a certain area, you might want to focus on that for the cold traffic because you want to give yourself as many advantages as possible that for people that don't know your brand. So you essentially can do this with a um, bit adjustments on the locations, or you can even break out campaigns altogether. I would only use that as like a last result, a resort. If certain areas are just taking all of your budget when you really want to focus on a certain state, city, or region. When doing region or, or device, adjustments for your camp for your broad campaign what you can essentially do is click on the shopping campaign you actually want to do scroll down and click on devices and in here you can do your bid adjustments whether you want to do the recommended 50 percent or 80 percent you can do it in here just so you can get more higher converting traffic and lower cost cost per conversions as you can see even in this account desktop is higher converting and then you can click in here as well and see different locations um, so you can break out different regions and do bid adjustments, or you can even click on the states within within America, look at the all-time data and just see, okay, what, what areas have the best conversion rates historically and do bid adjustments there, or even break break out these regions into a whole new campaign if, if you really want to focus on profitability with the cold campaign. Cool. Now onto the actual scaling. Now that you have everything set up, you're going to want to switch to target return on ads. But like I mentioned in the previous strategy, and you still want to follow the same here. Um, and essentially, while you're scaling 
you want to make sure that you're spending your budget. If your budget's not being spent, you might want to revisit your negative keyword list and remove some like two word um, negative keywords that you might have been adding before because you want to maintain profitability. But when you're scaling, you might want to re remove these so Google, Google can find more customers, even though the search terms might not be as um, tight as you would have wanted previously, but you could find winners um, by removing those. All right, awesome. Now onto Google Merchant Center. So Google Merchant Center, this isn't very important for this strategy when using supplemental feeds, because I'm gonna show you in a screen recording in a second, but essentially in the keyword research portions and as you get more search terms data, you really wanna optimize your campaigns for the cold traffic because if people are searching your brand or your product's brand, most of the time, if it's somewhere in the middle or towards the end of it, the brand is gonna show up and people are gonna click. But for like the higher volume stuff, you really wanna optimize for cold traffic because when you can win the cold traffic, you're really golden and you're always gonna make money. So I would definitely create the supplemental feed or use an app in Shopify and focus on adding the most high volume relevant product type plus attribute search terms to the front of your titles so you can be more profitable. So it can either be brand plus attribute. I wouldn't, I wouldn't focus on brand as much because that's probably gonna convert either way, but I would focus more on product type plus attribute depending on how people search. Finally, to recap what we just went over. So use previous data or Google Keyword Planner to create negative keyword lists and structure titles. Max out brand and SKU impression share first. Solely scale to two plus n gram search terms and with the broad campaigns, depending on the volume and profitability. And once you get automated bidding, you can loosen up your negative keyword list and um, demographics and products to add more, loosen up and just scale more profitably. Awesome. If you found this helpful, reach out to me for a free consultation or leave in the comments any questions, comments, or concerns. Like if you like the video and subscribe for more content like this. Thanks and have a good rest of your day.